pregnant. Congratulations. You've thought about names, but have you thought about health insurance? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about some health insurance options if you are pregnant, including what you may not know about eligibility. Now, if you have questions, you can reach us in the comments below or at the number on the screen because we are licensed health insurance brokers. And of course, we're licensed nationwide and there is no charge for our services. If you're currently without insurance, you may be considering paying for your prenatal care out of pocket. Now, on average, prenatal care costs about $2,000, which isn't too bad, but an uncomplicated birth can cost upwards of $10,000. And that's not taking into consideration that about one in three women in the United States have a C-section and over 60% have an epidural, and therefore your costs could be upward of $50,000. You can check out the Healthcare Blue Book for more information regarding your pregnancy and your state's average costs. So what are your best options? If your employer has at least 50 full-time employees, then under the Affordable Care Act, they must provide affordable health insurance, which of course covers pregnancy. This would be the easiest route to obtaining insurance for your pregnancy. Your provider should actually be able to give you a more accurate estimate of what your care will cost with your current plan, but usually you can expect that you're going to reach your deductible and out-of-pocket maximum unless you have a high deductible health plan and then you might not reach that out-of-pocket maximum. Remember, if you currently have group health insurance, even if you're laid off, then you would be able to enroll in COBRA, which will allow you to keep your exact same health coverage. However, COBRA is usually rather cost prohibitive. Then of course, there's marketplace insurance. Now it may come as a surprise to you that actually becoming pregnant does not qualify you for a special enrollment period in most states. However, there are many qualifying life events which would make you eligible for a special enrollment period. For example, loss of coverage. So if you were to lose your coverage, perhaps through your employer, then not only could you choose to enroll in COBRA, but at that time you could actually enroll in a marketplace plan instead, which would likely be much less expensive than COBRA. You would also qualify if there's a change in household size. So your household size could be increased either through the birth or adoption of a child or marriage, or of course it could decrease through divorce or death. Either of these situations would make you eligible for a special enrollment period. Another very important one would be a change in location. So let's say you're pregnant and now you need to find a bigger home for your growing family. Well, moving far enough away from your current location would likely make you eligible for a special enrollment period. Now we're going to talk about Medicaid later in the video, but I'd like you to remember that being denied Medicaid could also make you eligible for a special enrollment period. So marketplace plans are great for pregnancy. Let's take a look. So when you go to healthcare.gov, you'll first be asked to put in your zip code. I'm going to put in a North Carolina zip code because I want to show you something about Medicaid here. We're going to put in it's just us. And let's put, of course, pregnant. And let's put in an income of 32000 Now look what happens. You may be eligible for coverage through Medicaid or CHIP, which is the Children's Health Insurance Program. Now that doesn't mean that you can't get a marketplace plan, it's just telling you that you may also be eligible for Medicaid, which would offer you a lower cost alternative. If we were to put in a higher salary, it would still make us eligible for a premium tax credit, but not necessarily eligible for Medicaid or CHIP. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to look at. Um, these plans are currently being sorted by lowest premium, but there's something that's very helpful, specifically if you're pregnant. If you go to plan details, scroll down cost and coverage examples they always include pregnancy and normal delivery so this is very helpful if you're pregnant it gives you a very good idea of what your costs might be so for this specific plan we're looking at an out-of-pocket cost of seven thousand five hundred and sixty dollars let's check out this plan again scroll down cost and coverage examples Ooh, this typical cost for a healthy pregnancy, $9,070. So that's a significant difference. Now, unfortunately, there's not really a way to filter based on that specific cost. So you would have to go through plan by plan. I know it's a little inconvenient, but it could definitely save you a lot of money. You might want to filter by lowest deductible. Let's see what this plan would be. Cost and coverage examples. 
Okay, so cost for a typical healthy pregnancy and normal delivery, $5,655. That doesn't mean that's exactly what it's going to be, but that is the typical cost. It should give you a pretty good indication of which plans will offer lower cost prenatal coverage. Something else you should know about all marketplace plans is that they offer the 10 essential benefits. This is very important for pregnancy, maternity, and newborn care. So this page will provide you more information depending upon if you're pregnant and planning to get pregnant or if you recently had a baby. Also, if you scroll down here, you will see that breastfeeding coverage is also covered by marketplace plans. And there are other options as well. We touched on Medicaid earlier in the video, and remember that even if your income doesn't necessarily qualify you for Medicaid under regular circumstances, it may be different in your state if you're pregnant. Now, although we can't really advise on Medicaid specifically, we would highly recommend that you contact your local office. There are also free and low-cost clinics available that offer prenatal care. But please do not put off accessing prenatal care because many OBGYNs will actually not accept new patients past 20 weeks. Remember, when your child is born, that would qualify you for a new special enrollment period, and at that point, you'll have many more options available to you. In the meantime, if you do have questions, you can reach us in the comments below or at the number on the screen. There is, of course, no charge for our services. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date. Also, if you want to learn more, make sure to check out this video all about marketplace plans. And if you've had success finding insurance throughout your pregnancy, please let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time.